Hey guys, Phil here at Woods Tree Farm. Thanks for checking us out today. We are in the middle of our third planting. You know, we've had this channel, we've had this farm for coming up on a year and a half now. We planted our first trees spring of 2019. We planted more in the fall of 2019 and here we are spring 2020 planting some more trees. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about maybe some of your planting options. If you're doing it all by hand, like we are, you can use the dibble bar, which I've shown in other videos, or you might choose to just use a shovel. And some people use a post hole digger or a gas powered auger or an auger that's hooked to their tractor. It's a bunch of other methods, but if you're doing it all by hand and you gotta choose between a shovel or a dibble bar, there might be a couple reasons why you might choose one or the other. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing today. I'm actually using both and I'll cover with you here why I'm using both and in which situations I'm choosing one or the other. If you got any questions about what we're doing out here, leave those in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that like button just below the video. And if you like our channel and you wanna keep up with the work that we're doing out here on our farm here in Central Virginia, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you can get notified of our future videos. All right, let's get to work. So I just had this thought for this video as I was doing this work today because this is something that I've started to figure out now that I've done a few plantings. And what you find when you buy bare root transplants like these, and we've shown in other videos, if you get the plugs that are grown in a greenhouse, they just have a short little dense root system and you can just make a tiny little hole and drop those in and planting's really easy. But when you get bare root transplants, the roots are all different shapes and sizes. And usually I'll cut the roots to about 12 inches so I don't have to dig a really, really deep hole. And that'll also prevent us from putting the trees in the ground with what they call a J root or the root system uh, curled upwards towards the sky like that. You don't wanna do that. When you get these bare root transplants in your box, you're gonna have trees of all different sizes. So here's one that's kind of a medium size and I'm gonna pull one out here. And here's one that's considerably bigger. This one that's considerably bigger also has a bigger root system. And this isn't even one of the biggest ones that I've seen, but this root system here is at least uh, six or seven inches wide. And that is more than double the width of my dibble bar. So if I use a dibble bar on a tree like this, I'm gonna have to either dig a double width hole or I'm gonna force all these roots down into that skinny dibble bar hole. And frankly, I don't know if that really impacts the growth of the tree or not, but I'm thinking we want to get these bigger trees in a bigger hole so that their roots really have uh, the right environment to spread out. And we'll put them in the hole with their, with their roots spread out, just like they came out of wherever they came from. So for the bigger ones, I'm using a shovel and you can see right here, I've got a hole that's as big as my bucket. It's over 12 inches across. I've got plenty of room to fit this tree into that hole. So I'm gonna use my shovel for the bigger ones and for the smaller ones, I'm gonna use the dibble bar. And you can see in here, there's, there's some that are really small. Like look at this tiny little guy. No problem planting that with a dibble bar. So what I'm starting to do is separate these out when I'm trimming the roots. And when I'm trimming the roots, I'm gonna put my dibble bar trees in one bucket, and I'm gonna put my shovel trees in another bucket, and that will kind of streamline the workflow here as we're going down the rows and planting these trees. All right, when I'm planting these by hand, and I know I'm, my head's just a little off camera, but I want you to see where, the work that I'm doing. When I'm planting these trees, this just came out of a bucket with a root dip, so there's root dip granules all over these roots. Might even go ahead and give it another fresh dip because I pulled it out in and out a couple times here. Give it a fresh dip. It's got plenty of root gel on the roots. I'm gonna put it right here in the middle of the hole and you can see there's a root here and there's a root here. As wide as that hole is. And that main root, that main tap root, I'm gonna push that down on the bottom of the hole so it's not curling up. I'm holding the base of my tree at the ground level here. And then I'm just gonna start backfilling and what I like about digging a hole with a shovel is I can put more of this uh, kind of topsoil, this soil with more organic matter down in the bottom of this hole. And what came out of the bottom of this hole is dense clay like this. I can put that back on top. So I feel like, again, this is, we're kind of new and I don't have any history to say this is better or not. 
but I feel like if we can get more organic matter down in the bottom of that hole, we can get good quality topsoil and more nutrients all around those roots, then I feel like the tree is going to have a lot better chance at surviving. So I made sure as I was filling the hole that I packed in with my fingertips all throughout the bottom and all around all those roots. Now I'm gonna go and stomp on it to make sure everything's nice and firm. I'm gonna stomp all the way around. And then all that soil that I think is less desirable, that dense clay, I can fill around the top of my tree because its roots aren't growing along the surface. So I can put all that around. Any big clumps of clay, I like to try to break them up. And then I might stomp on it one more time. And that last little tamp that I just did was to get the tree straight. It was leaning towards me a little bit. So I pushed the tree forward, tamped it down, and should be good to go. On the other hand, a dibble bar tree is a little bit less work up front because I don't have to dig as big of a hole. So I'm just gonna shove my dibble bar in the ground. This soil was all uh, subsoiled and uh, tilled last fall and it's just been sitting here. So it's still nice and soft. We got some rain last night. And all I'm doing right now is just kind of filling in the bottom of the hole. Uh, I don't want there to be a little air pocket in the bottom. And a lot of times when you're wedging the uh, dibble bar back and forth, if it's pivoting part way up the bar, it'll create a, a wider section at the very bottom. So I just kind of cut away the sides of my hole and let some soil fall down in there. My little skinny dibble bar tree, you can see its roots aren't very wide at all. They're going to fit right down into the bottom of that hole I just cut. And you can actually see its roots here are about the size of the planting bar. So it's perfect. So it's going to go right down on the bottom. I'm going to hold the what, what the base of the tree, what I want at ground level. I'm going to hold that right there at ground level. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to fill the hole. I'm going to tamp it in real good with my fingertips all around the roots. Stomp on it. Fill in what I stomped. And we're ready to move to the next one. So you can see how this size tree is a lot quicker than the shovel trees. The shovel trees, I spend more time digging the hole, spend more time filling it back in. So, um, you know, you just gotta figure out a workflow that works for you. But I think by starting to separate these out into two different buckets, get the dibble bar trees in one bucket, the shovel trees in another, we'll be able to fly right through these. All right, if you got anything to add about the dibble bars or planting bars versus shovel or any other method of planting by hand, leave those in the comments. Happy to hear your feedback and your opinions and your experiences all the time. And uh, I think that's going to be it. A little quick short video here. Thanks for following along and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.